Cola, uh, good morning and many thanks for being with us today uh, in this set of interviews we are conducting with many organizations all over the world. Uh -huh. So please can you tell us a little bit about you, who is Cora Faferot and why is it that you have been interested in these topics of direct democracy? Yes, um, the reason, uh, first of all, I'm working as the spokesperson for democracy international and um, the uh, purpose of the organization is to strengthen democracy and in particular direct democracy and um, I have uh, had a personal experience when I was living in Ireland uh, about 10 years ago there was a uh, referendum on the issue of abortion which in Germany at the time was a very moral issue and very contested. And in Ireland, this issue naturally was very contested as well. But the difference was that it was put to referendum and therefore people from all walks of life discussed the issue and they were involved and they were making up their own minds about the issue. And this experience in 2002 was very impressive for me, and I realized that um, people get interested in politics when they have the opportunity, when the decision is put to them. And since then, I have been following the issue regularly, and um, I have also done some studies on the issue, and now I'm very happy to work for the cause Professionally, yes. What, what exactly is Democracy International? Democracy International is a non-government uh, organization, an NGO. Um, it's independent, which means that it's funded by donations and membership fees. And the idea of the organization is to campaign for better democracy legislation in the countries, in the nations, but also at transnational level. And since we are based in Europe, we very much, uh, we also focus on the European Union and also we focus on the United Nations. I like uh, to have a democratic assembly, UN assembly. Um, and the, I, this is kind of the idea to improve democracy or direct democracy legislation. And for this to happen, uh, we realize that we need to bring together democracy activists who are working in different countries and to give them a platform to exchange their ideas and their, um, and their actually the know-how of how to do things well. And Democracy International, if you want to say it like this, is this platform of people, democracy activists, who are working on improving democracy legislation in the countries and at transnational levels. Why is it that you believe as an organization that it is possible to speak to, to speak about direct democracy concerning the fact, the fact that many countries today are too far from, from this kind of, of challenge. Yes, well, uh, it's like, yes, you're right. On the one hand, you have the politicians in power, of course, who are, it's a natural interest uh, to keep your own power. Um, that can be observed. This can be observed in any country, regardless whether it's Germany or whether it's Ukraine or whether it's, uh, let's say, Colombia, I guess. But um, on the other hand, you can see that uh, in many countries, people want to be directly involved. Like in Germany recently, there has been a opinion poll which said that, uh, which found that 84% of all people living in Germany would like to have a referendum at national level. So, uh, and this is just one fact. If you look into other countries, there are um, protests, their uh, movements, and people say they want to be directly involved. And we realize that direct democracy is a binding procedure which allows people to channel their political ideas directly into law. And therefore, we also believe that the concept of direct democracy is a very powerful one. And then, of course, Bearing in mind that politicians are politicians in power are 
not that much in favor of giving up their power. It's a hard, it's a tough battle. It's a hard, it's a long way to go to, to convince politicians that it's better for society to have a peaceful debate that, that the majority of people take the decision and not a few people who are elected every five years or every four years. What's the definition of democracy for you? For Democracy International, I speak on behalf of Democracy International and for the concept of uh, direct democracy, and which means that people, basically you have the instrument of citizen initiative, so that uh, people say we want this law to be realized and they collect a certain amount of signatures. Once these signatures have been collected, the parliament has to deal with the law proposal and then to uh, pass it over to, refer to hold a referendum. And the um, concept of direct democracy, as we understand it, is opposed to a consultative approach, consultative approach, but it means that procedures must be less binding, so that there's legally binding rules to say that once um, this amount of signatures has been collected, the parliament has to be with the request and there has to be a referendum. And regarding many difficulties uh, passing through many countries in the world, for example, the people has no good education levels. Do you think direct democracy can be also a reality? Yes. Um, there, um, yes, it works. <coughs> Excuse me. It works if you give uh, a lot of time to the... Um, to the process, which means that it's not, uh, people do not have to learn within two months, but they have to, um, they are given some time and there is an independent commission or independent body which provides information and people uh, have the opportunity to get in, to get familiar with the issues. And also, um, you need to bear in mind that you can lower the barriers. So if you, for example, if you had a population which has very high illiter illiter uh, rate of illiteracy, then it's, uh, the question, would you uh, provide information, for example, by radio or the video information rather than the written word? So in, in conclusion, it's not a matter of... Uh, whether not to, whether not that much people who are not that much educated can be with the issue, but whether you allow to create a platform where everybody affected has the opportunity to participate. What are the middle-term goals for democracy international in Germany and in Europe? In the middle term, is to um, bring together. Uh, you can also see it on our website. It's um, it's to uh, to learn from each other and to exchange information and on best practice, and then it's to help and to encourage each other and uh, to uh, develop together. It's uh, part of the so very important is to learning together. And I say once we have a profound and solid base of democracy activists in different countries then to say, okay, now we work together and we actually campaign hard to achieve our goals, which is to change legislation on how um, democracy is governed, or how democracy works in the countries and at the European Union level or the United Nations level. We want to know from your perspective, do you think direct democracy is able to spread all over the world as a reality? Uh, or maybe it's an utopian project. No, it's not. A, I, uh, naturally, it's um, it, it's something you need to invest time in. But uh, if you look at history overall, uh, when you had in before the French Revolution, you had monarchies, you had uh, aristocr aristocracies, and now uh, democracy uh, slowly evolves, and it's always a process is always an evolution and um, you cannot say and changing the, the form of governance you can also say okay it's a long-term process in, in the future it's also possible that pe um, like in Switzerland you know that uh, democracy works like it does in Switzerland
and that there is much more direct democracy. So it's not uh, a utopia, but it's a long-term vision that can be realized. Okay, Cora. Um, would you like to say goodbye to the people of Ecodemocracy who is hearing you? Goodbye, yes. <laughs>